the Comfort Doll was created to help people with their problems. Now he's the problem. Buttons the Bear lost a lucrative corporate sponsorship for reasons of moral turpitude. Bill the Ventriloquist Dummy has had 58 partners die in unlikely accidents. Rocco the Dog was a sidekick in a children's TV show until one day he snapped. Prison didn't help, and now in one last desperate stab at rehabilitation, they've been placed in a halfway house. A home for puppets who kill. So, what are we gonna see? I don't know, reservoir dogs? Seen it. Dog day after Who did these milk money calculations? I did. I did. They're completely wrong. He, he did. did. You guys would be better at math if you realized how fun and exciting it can be. Fun with math? <laughs> That's like trying to bring a hooker to orgasm. It just ain't gonna happen. <laughs> no, with, with this book, Fun with Numbers, you guys can discover the joy of math. And it'll keep you out of trouble. I mean, look at Buttons. Ever since I got him that job as a gardener, he's had no time to get into mischief. What about man bites dog? Mm, that scares me. Okay. Buttons! Buttons! Huh? There you are, boy. You all trimmed the head just like I asked you to, son? I sure did, Colonel, sir. Good lad. I sure do like you, Buttons. <laughs> One hell of a gardener. <laughs> you know, you're like the son I never had. Why, thank you, sir. I did have a son. But we lost him in Vietnam. The Viet Cong got him, took his fingernails out one by one. Anyway, where was I? Uh, we were talking about gardening. Oh, yeah. Nice job on the petunia bush. Uh. Really, first class job. Why, Dan? I'm just here to pick up buttons. Stay, have a libation. No, we've really got to get going. One little julep won't hurt nothing. My wife can whip up something. Hey, honey pot! Yes, Colonel Darling. Mix us up a batch of those mint juleps, will you, hon? Oh, I, I sure will, Colonel, honey. I've been so busy sucking on lemons all afternoon. It's so powerful, hot, and I sure do <sighs> love sucking on these lemons. How about you, Button? Yeah. You like sucking on lemons? <laughs> That's quite a wife you've got there. Son, she's my whole world. If anything ever destroyed the happiness I found, I don't know what I'd do. I'm sure that will never happen. Damn right it won't. I'm gonna go help with mint juleps. Thank you, son. No problem, Dad. <clears throat> Dan. That boy of yours is... Really special. <laughs> you should see him go at the tulips. <laughs> Sight to see. I'm sure it is. My wife likes them too. <laughs> but family. Look, maybe I should go uh, help with these. Uh, Relax. It'll get here. Say, I got something to show you. I, I, I'm awfully good at mint. My battlefield sword. It's the sword I used to kill the last fellow who betrayed me. Took his fucking head clean off. But now, just a conversation piece. <clears throat> what the fuck were you thinking? What? The guy's a military veteran and you're making out with his wife? So, you said you wanted me to work with my hands. He's the hero of three battle campaigns. What, 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 what's going on? Ah, oh, come on. I'm doing the old badger a favor. I'm keeping his wife happy. The old badger was explaining to me how he beheaded the guy who betrayed him and you're making time with his wife! Oh, come on. You worry too much. Oh, yeah. You know what? When he comes after you with his battle sword, don't come bleeding to me. You betcha. That's a hundred bucks on crazy legs in the fourth. Got it? Crazy legs, crazy legs. Well, that's ten to one odds. What? I, I teach you guys simple math and you use it for gambling? You know what? You were right. Math is fun and exciting. You can't be a bookie. Fine, I'll go back to selling crack. <laughs> I guess being a bookie isn't so bad. <laughs> I 
I see you as more than a gardener. I see you as a friend. Uh -oh. I know I can confide in you. Of course you can, Colonel. It's Honeypot. She's becoming distant, cold. She huh? recoils at my touch. She's not the same. Mm. I brought fresh eyes. Uh. Buttons, when you have a moment, would you come to the kitchen? There are uh. some plants that need watering. Uh. <laughs> oh, she's just probably having a bad day, that's oh. all. Uh. She's messing around with someone else, and I know who it is. Uh. It was spur of the moment. Uh, I can explain. Shh. It's Dan. Dan? Always dropping by here, drinking my bourbon, smiling at me, yeah. listening to my stories. <laughs> Colonel, really, I don't think it's Dan. Well, who else would you suspect, son? You? Come to think of it, it could be Dan. So you tell the insane man with the sword collection that I'm fucking his wife perfect. Well, I had to say something. I thought he was on to me. The pressure was enormous. At one point, he was making me do shooters off the end of his sword. Oh, well, who can that be? Hello, Dan. Oh, well, Colonel, we were just talking about you. But, but Buttons likes to make up stories. And, and did I mention I'm gay? I just came by to return Button's garden shears. He left them behind. Oh, well, thank you, sir. Son, you have sullied my honor with my wife. Therefore, I challenge you to a duel, son. Thanks a lot. Ah, you worry too much. The guy in bed's garden shears four inches into the door and you tell me I worry too much. Well, he sure is a lot stronger than he looks. <laughs> that guy stays in shape. Oh, well, for God's sake. God damn it. Hello. Rocco, take a message. <sighs> I'm sorry, Rocco, can I come to the phone right now? May I please take a message? 100 bucks on what? No, okay, I got it. Hundred bucks on flagellation. That's a funny name for a horse. That's not a horse. Yeah, it's more like a state of being. <laughs> <laughs> flagellation ten to one. Shot and stuff five to one. You, you've been taking bets on how I'm gonna die. Well, the whole neighborhood's talking about how the colonel challenged you to a duel. Yeah, come on, Dad. I mean, uh, if we can make some money out of this, no harm done, right? Cuddles, you, you made a bet on this too. No one wants to see you die, Dan. But if the colonel finishes you off with a Bowie knife, I get a dollar twenty. There's not going to be a duel. I'm going over to the colonel's right now and straighten this whole thing out. Well, Dan, good luck. Say the right thing and you get out of this mess. Say the wrong thing and he blows your balls off with a forty-five. <laughs> well, you're going to go with me to make things right with the colonel. What? Are you crazy? He could kill me. Well, either he does or I do. Come on, let's go. Dan, my old son. In a cold light of day, I owe you an apology. An apology? I'm sorry I got carried away yesterday. I was drunk and I let my imagination get the better of me. You did? When I told Honeypot I was suspicious of you too, she laughed and laughed. <laughs> she did? She said she'd as soon fuck a dead man as you and she begged me to spare your life. Please forgive me, Dan. I was a jealous fool. Oh, uh, of, of course. Well, I'm glad to see you boys making nice again. Colonel Darling, would you be a sweetie and let me steal buttons from you for just one moment? <laughs> <laughs> I have a bush that needs some attention. Well, of course, darling. <laughs> buttons, re remember what we talked about? Huh? Oh, yeah, you got it, Dan. Uh, <clears throat> well, now that we got all that ugliness out of the way, I'd say this calls for a little libation. Oh, uh, uh, n none for me, thanks. Nonsense. I hate to drink alone. <laughs> uh, don't you offend my sense of Southern honor by refusing me, boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> 
I've been dreaming about our lips mm -hmm. touching ever since the other day. Oh, there was something I was supposed to tell you. Can I wait until I do that special thing? No, I'm sorry, but I promised Dan that I would... What special thing? That special thing I'm known for in five counties. Huh? Did you say five counties? Oh. Uh. Ah, ah. <laughs> Dixie. Ooh, mama. Now that's what 90-year-old bourbon tastes like, Dan. Mm, delicious. You know what, Maybe I'm a simple man, but... Give me a nine-year-old bourbon and a loaded handgun, and I'm a happy camper. Say, while you're here, why don't I show you my prize azalea bush? Really a knockout. Run me through all uh, the great room there, boy. Cause I'm not fit to drive. You know, son, there's an art to growing azaleas. Not any old fool can do it. Oh, um, why don't we check out the tulips? Where you going, boy? It's a good thing I turned the colonel away or he would have shot you on the spot. Well, it's your fault, wheeling the old geezer around the house. Who was supposed to break up with her? Well, I can't help it. The more jealous he gets, the more turned on I am. I'm sick. Dan, you're still alive. Damn you. You living was a long shot. Now I have to pay out 50 to one. I'm sorry to mess up your plans. You know, it almost paid to strangle him on the spot. Yeah. It's probably her now, okay? Now promise me you're gonna break up with her. Fine, Dan. Fine. <sighs> then again, one last roll in the hay couldn't possibly hurt anything. Buttons, I gotta thank you for seeing this old jealous fool through some tough times. Uh, you're a real friend. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> think nothing of it, sir. I feel like a real ass thinking that Honeypot was having an affair. <laughs> well, it happens to the best of us, Colonel. I'm just glad you've come to the realization that it's all in your imagination. Of course it is. Mm -hmm. And to set my mind completely at ease, I hired a private eye. <coughs> you what? I hired a private eye to follow Honeypot for the last two days. Merely a formality, son. Oh, uh, uh, did he follow her everywhere? He's reporting to me today. Then I can sleep well again. Oh, uh, that's, uh, that's good. <laughs> Thank you, Buttons. Oh. You give new meaning to the term friendship, son. Hey, no problem. <laughs> Mr. Marlowe, don't keep me hanging on the edge of my chair. What are the results of your investigation? And don't beat around the bush, sir. Tell me outright. I'm sorry to tell you that your suspicions were correct, sir. She's having an affair, all right. You'll be surprised who with. When can I expect you? I'm on my way over. Thank you kindly. Someone murdered my private eye before he could tell me who was having the affair with my wife. <gasps> Terrible, sir. Yeah, he had proof in everything. Oh, awful. Now we'll never know who it is who's sleeping with your wife, stroking her creamy thighs, engorging himself in her luscious body. Too bad all the proof was destroyed, huh? Not all of it. Say what? My detective had it in duplicate. What? His secretary is faxing me a photo of the scoundrel right now. What? The colonel, he hired a private eye to follow Honeypot. He's got the goods on me. Well, it serves you right for trying to set me up the way you did. <gasps> oh my God, there he is. <clears throat> Don't let him kill me. Dan Barlow? Yes? You're acquainted with a man who goes by the name of the colonel? Yes, something happened? He's been murdered. What? 
It's, it's terrible. You know what's worse? You had a run in with the victim, now you're a prime suspect. And to think this kind colonel invited Dan Barlow into his home. He made him a friend, only to be murdered in cold blood by this sinister scoundrel. These allegations are ridiculous. If anyone has any evidence against me, I invite them to come forward. The colonel was cursing Dan, accusing him of having sex with his wife. And what was your feeling about all this? Well, it seems to me that if anyone wanted the colonel dead, it was certainly Dan. Dan often said he wished the colonel would go away. And how did you interpret that? Dan seemed to want the colonel out of the picture. Don't worry, Dan. I don't care what you've done. I forgive you. I'll always refuse to believe you hacked the colonel to death. And if you did, you had your reasons. Oh, for fuck's sake. Mr. Barlow, where were you on the night in question? Oh, I, I was at the, the halfway house uh, reading a book on home repair. Can anyone corroborate your story? No, I, I didn't see anyone all night. How convenient for you that nobody saw you. Well, I'll put it to you that no one saw you at the halfway house because, in fact, you'd already gone back to the Colonel's mansion where you hacked the Colonel to pieces, shattering this young woman's dreams. This poor woman whom you have widowed, consoled by the man whom she and the Colonel adopted like their own son. Like a son, Mr. Baum. Miss Honeypaw. Now, Dan claims that you were having an affair with Buttons. Well, that's just about the most silly thing I've ever heard. Imagine me, a nice girl, carrying on with a bear. It's absurd. <laughs> well, then you are saying that you did not have an affair. Most certainly not. We took him into our home like a son. Dan here, well, he claims uh, he saw you performing uh, oral sex on buttons. What an awful and vicious man. Is there nothing he will not say to save his cursed life? <laughs> Good luck and no hard feelings, huh? Good luck. I know what you and Honey Pot are up to. You're trying to frame me so the two of you can run away together forever. <laughs> Don't be silly. I'm on your side. I only appeal to you to get right with God before you meet your maker. Well, I got news for you. I'm not going down. I'm going to unveil you as the lying liar you are. Don't think for a second the jury's gonna fall for your bullshit. I have unending faith in the criminal system. Hear ye, hear ye. Court is now in session. The defendant is found to be guilty. Dan Barlow, you are sentenced to hang until you are dead for the horrible crimes you have committed. May God have mercy on your hellbound soul. Oh. <coughs> uh, now that we've got all that nastiness out of the way, Honey Pot and I would like to announce our pending June wedding. We fell in love during this trial. I say. Here you go, Barlow. The last meal. We got hamburger. French fries and oh, mmm, vanilla ice cream. Bon appetit. Oh, by the way, you got visitors. We came to see you one last time, Dan. Thanks, fellas. Well, I'm sorry they're gonna hang you, Dan. Yeah, I hear it's a terrible way to go. You uh, 
you poo in your pants and your tongue comes out. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd like to be there to offer my support, Dan, but Honeypot and I are gonna go to Paris. It's the first week for the Beaujolais Nouveau. Can't miss that. <laughs> well, uh, see ya. Well, it was nice knowing you fellas, although you have caused me nothing but trouble. Thanks, Dan. And if there's anything that I can do to make your last days more comfortable, name it. And now that you mention it, there, there, there is something you could do. I would love a cigar. Hey, guys, guys, I found a burrito stand just outside. Yeah? Yeah, Dan, look later. There's a uh, burrito with my name on it. <laughs> oh, oh, and uh, one other thing, what was, oh yeah, new evidence just came out in your case, Dan. They found the real killer. What? You're a lucky man, Mr. Barlow. The murder weapon was found in Honeypot's possession. <gasps> yes, I killed him. I always hated him. He was a drunken, foolish lout. I'm glad I did it. Anything else you'd like to say before we sentence you? No. You go ahead and you throw the book at me. Because I got a man here who will wait for his woman no matter what. Uh... He doesn't care that I'm a killer. We have real love. And he will wait for me for 25 years if he has to. Isn't that right, Sugar Bear? 25 years? Are you kidding? You'll be old then. There isn't enough Botox in the world that would make me wait. <laughs> Bye-bye. <clears throat> Sorry. Damn you, you little fucker! Oh, more it's a good thing I turned him away, because he almost caught you. Yeah, caught you. I know. Oh, oh, <laughs> what a fertilizer bush. Uh, is it okay? I've been... Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> the judge is naked from the waist down. Yeah! Yeah. <laughs> Oh, hope it's not cookies again. Watch out for the train, watch out for the train! What, what train? What, what? Oh! Stop, stop!